Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to the new technology roundtable today. It's a pleasure all having you on board, panelists and participants. Um, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence today and study how we can leverage AI to better our perfumery industry. It's going to be a 360 approach, and there are four axes we're going to discuss today. First, the creation, creation process, using AI as perfumer assistant. Then uh, regulation and how we can better manage our document with the regulatory department. Then third, how can we use AI for sales and evaluation to optimize our processes. And fourth, to enhance the customer experience. So today, my name is Valerie Lovisa. I'm a consultant in sustainability and perfumery. Um, and I will be your moderator today. So I will ask each one of our participants to introduce each other while, emphasize, while maybe specifying in which part of the supply chain you actually use AI in, your in, in our industry. So please, Sarah, let's start by you. Hi, my name is Sarah Evans. I'm the head of product for e-commerce and omni-channel at Shalu Group. So focusing AI on our customer experience and how to delight our customers. Please, Raoya. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Raoya. I'm the general manager of CPL Aromas in Dubai. And I will be talking about how we utilize AI to answer briefs and optimize uh, customer creations and projects. Sami. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sami Magri. Uh, I'm a doctor in artificial intelligence and machine learning. I'm the founder of a startup called Oh My Note uh, that uses artificial intelligence to augment the customer experience uh, in retail. And Philippine? Hi, everyone. I'm Philippine. I'm a senior perfumer at Simrise here based in Dubai. And I'm going to talk to you about Filira, our tool that uh, is working like a perfumer assistant uh, toward more creativity and uh, sustainability in uh, our formulations. Thank you. And Odile? Uh, hello everyone, I'm Odile Pellissier. I'm going to talk today about how we use AI in creation and development. So as you can see, we will have people from the creation side, but also for the customer experience. So we'll cover the whole end-to-end -end, uh, creation of products. And before we start and any further ado, without any further ado, as we say when we organize a show, I would like to turn to Sanme here today because Sameh is our PhD specialized in artificial intelligence. So she is a total geek, even though she doesn't look like a geek, but she's a total <laughs> geek in the field of artificial intelligence. And we would like to know, what is the definition of AI and how, according to you, can we use AI in our industry? Yes. Um, so uh, certainly uh, the majority of us, we have seen uh, these uh, science fiction movies where uh, artificial intelligence uh, represents the super smart computer or the very smart uh, robot that will control uh, the planet. So I'm happy today to uh, present artificial intelligence outside of uh, Hollywood. <laughs> so uh, artificial intelligence is, uh, is basically uh, involves uh, how to use computers and codes to replicate tasks that uh, require human intelligence. So uh, as a human being, uh, we can see with, your eye, with our eyes, we can understand what's around us. Uh, we can um, interact visually with what's around us. Uh, we also uh, can understand languages. We can speak different languages. Uh, and our brain is capable of uh, identifying patterns. So artificial intelligence uh, is a field of computer science that includes so many subfields, like uh, natural language processing, machine learning, computer vision, emotional artificial intelligence. All these to tools and algorithms, we use them to replicate or imitate uh, tasks that require human intelligence. For this, uh, we need data. We need a lot of data so we can train these algorithms, these codes, to perform these uh, tasks uh, as close as possible to the human perception of this uh, given task, a specific task within a specific area, of course. Let's say we have a lot of data and we train uh, our, uh, our code uh, correctly. 
then the code will be capable, after a lot of trainings, a lot of use cases, it can be capable of identifying patterns. It can be capable of predicting uh, information and also giving a recommendation. And this is what we call uh, uh, data-driven uh, decision, data-driven re recommendations. Uh, so just to ensure you, uh, I mean, uh, artificial intelligence cannot compete with uh, human brains because uh, uh, just to give you an example, for example, in 2016, there is uh, an algorithm, a code that is named um, uh, AlphaGo, and this uh, code uh, defeated the best player of uh, Go game. Uh, but the same algorithm, if we ask it uh, to uh, drive a car or to make a joke, it will not be capable of doing this. So certainly artificial intelligence is very important uh, in treating one task in one area, uh, uh, I mean define the task in a divine, definite areas, but the human brain is very smart and powerful in uh, treating so many different areas and problems uh, in re really fast. Uh, I think that uh, artificial intelligence can be uh, beneficial uh, to the fragrance industry from the creation until the consumer experience, not only because it will help us to scale up, uh, to uh, uh, reduce the time that we consume in uh, so many uh, long um, processes and give the advantage for the creativity of uh, people to use the time to, for creativity rather than using this time, this time to uh, to do the proce procedures, uh, I mean, uh, uh, and also for to enhancing the consumer experience. It's a very complete and clear introduction <laughs> to artificial <laughs> intelligence. So no I'm worry, happy. because today it's going to be recorded, and everything will be available for replay. So if the definition was not like, because it's very impactful, huh? but you need to replay <laughs> it maybe a second time or a third time to understand the essence and then really the impact that this can have in our industry. And first, I'm turning to you, Philippine, for the first question. Because at Simrise, if I'm not mistaken, you were the first one to develop artificial intelligence as perfumer assistant. Is that right? Yes, it's correct. Actually, we started uh, this initiative uh, in 2017 with IBM. And uh, it was a unique approach because we wanted to think about AI uh, from a creative standpoint. Uh, we really... Um, we're thinking of how to boost the creativity of the perfumers uh, through AI. So we developed um, this uh, collaboration with IBM called Filira. And in 2019, already we launched the two first fragrances 100% generated uh, by AI with uh, Boticario. And uh, <coughs> since then, it, it developed also towards uh, create um, more sustainability uh, formulation we can now basically um, set a target of renewability or biodegradability we want in our formulas. And Filera is helping us to reach the target. And last point, it's also a big gain of time for us perfumers. Within one minute, we can generate a formula that is more sustainable. It's a big gain of time that frees us from, um, from low um, value tasks. So we can focus more on creativity. So. First, it was very clear. Then we are wondering, in practice, how does it work? Because you are sitting at your desk in front of your computer with all your fragrances around you and raw materials. So then how do you communicate with the AI? So it's literally like a partnership. It's like playing ping pong. It goes back and forth. But the perfumer has to initiate everything. The machine cannot do uh, anything by itself. Uh, it works. Uh, it's an algorithm that works like... Um, like Amazon or Spotify or, or Google or Waze, you basically um, set some uh, preferences or some target to reach. And then Filera is uh, suggesting us some uh, alternatives. For example, if I want to increase the, the creativity on some um, given formula, I will set the level of, uh, cr of innovation I want to reach. And then Filera is going to submit me some uh, suggestion that can, I can follow or not. Uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's challenging our uh, creative uh, reflex as like perfumers because with time we tend to always use the same raw materials when we want to uh, create formulas or improve the long lastingness or the diffusion. And um, Filera is basically a learning machine that understands like our preference of formulation, exactly like Spotify. 
And um, what is really amazing is that it's uh, all the perfumers of the company are using Filera. So it's a, it's a collective intelligence. We are putting together our knowledge, our expertise uh, to leverage uh, on creativity and on biodegradability. So that's a beautiful point that you just rose here because it's one AI, one big brain that is collaborating with all the perfumers. So then he understands the preferences of each perfumer, is that right? Exactly, and at the same time, we put all our preferences together, all our talents together. And we had a question as well. Um, when you receive a comment from the AI and a suggestion, then how do you make sure that the AI is going to learn, is going to keep on learning? So exactly, it's a very good point. So there is the, the mm -hmm. Filera is a, is a learning machine. Uh, we give uh, feedbacks on all the suggestions uh, Filera is, um, is bringing us. And uh, the data is continuously updated. Uh, this is how it works. Thank you. And now I'm turning to you, Odile. So you're handling the creation at Firma Niche, is that right? Yes, the global creation. So you also use a perfumer assistant for the creation, but not only the creation. Can you tell us more? Yes. So actually at Firma Niche, we have started to work uh, on uh, artificial intelligence in 2018, where we decided to uh, create an incubator in Lausanne, at the Ecole Polytechnique de Lausanne, to work with startups, PhD researchers on this idea of AI for the creation, but also for the development. So I'm not going to speak too much about Charlie, which is really working uh, like Phileas uh, on, on the same principle. The idea was also on how do we make sure that we use it on a day-to-day -day for our clients, so we have integrated the, arti the artificial intelligence with the sustainability. And now we have some artificial intelligence that really work in a context, meaning for which market, linked to all the conscious perfumery indicator that we want to have, linked to the Ecosense compass. So this is really something that changed our life. The other thing is that it's linked to regulatory. And now Charlie is creating with the regulatory constraints. So when it comes to the perfumer, it's about stimuli. The AI was helping us for this type of stimuli. It also is used uh, for the GC, for instance, when you do an analysis to really speed up and make sure that the computer is doing this uh, GC analysis by itself. And this new generation is really giving us uh, uh, some versions that are quite interesting. On top of this, when creating, as you just said, uh, Philippines, it's about how do we make sure that we are really targeting the, the consumer, delighting them, having the right performance. So we have developed some tools with AI to make sure that we have the trail that we need for the signature. And when you are here, you see uh, how much we can smell things in the air. And this is extremely important. The second thing, of course, uh, is about the blooming uh, for different categories. And then it, the, the AI is uh, really here to see how we can accelerate things. Today we are, uh, of course, having more and more constraints, and we want people to focus on what is essential for creation, meaning the nose and the brain. So apart from this, we try to accelerate with some prediction, the prediction of the flashpoints which is uh, important, the prediction of the stability to allow the, the clients to launch much faster with prediction of stability that are uh, true at 99% uh, now, so it's quite interesting. So I feel like the speed of change is actually exponential, and then you started as perfumer assistant, then linking to EcoCompass with sustainability, and then linked as well to IFRA um, regulation, and then optimizing the stability yes. of products as well and enhancing the speed of uh, launch on the market, if I must say. So exactly. that's incredible. And we just started our conversation, so please stay with us. And now we'd like to talk about regulatory affairs. So how can we actually leverage AI in regulatory affairs? So I'm just going to ask a question to, um, Bel um, excuse me, uh, to Tony Belmonte and Calpita, are you with us? Okay. So I'm asking the question. We were supposed to have a Zoom live conferences today. Unfortunately, it was not possible technically. 
So we recorded Tony Belmonte, who is the founder of CamChain, a startup specialized in treating the information of uh, artificial intelligence linked to regulatory affairs. So it's really inspiring for all perfumery houses, so for all our industry. So Tony, what is the main challenge in our industry when it comes to regulatory affairs? Could you tell us more about CamChain? What is the objective of the AI you developed? with uh, how does it work in practice and practical examples with numbers as well. How much resources can we actually spare if we deploy the AI within each perfumery houses? We are listening to you, Tony. Co-founder of a startup specialized in the regulatory affair. Um, for us, um, the artificial intelligence is a tool that will uh, allow and uh, give to the companies uh, involved in that changes uh, to implement state through processes. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, AI, uh, we have uh, a lot of documentation to manage. We have uh, uh, different suppliers, a lot of complexity, a um, lot of different documents, as I mentioned, now and in the future. And uh, this is going to be uh, a situation uh, who could uh, uh, impact very much and negatively the industry. Thank you, Tony, for this introduction. Uh, it was the first part. Would you mind playing the second one? Thank you. Very good question. And, and, it's, and it's right now already there. Um, the regulatory department uh, will have to deal uh, uh, with the increased number of technical documentation types in the coming months and years. Uh, in the coming months with, uh, uh, with the allergen changes moving uh, uh, toward 82, so adding up 56 new allergens. But in the future, with the Green Deal uh, in Europe and all the changes that are going to disrupt a lot um, the situation, uh, will have a significant impact in our industry and in the whole chemical industry. Uh, Cefic uh, stated that uh, the impact uh, uh, from uh, the following 17 years could potentially uh, reach the 80 billions. So from 45 to 80 billions is the impact they calculated. And our industry is, is pretty much consumer of, uh, of data, uh, of technical data. And when you are managing a number of references or ingredient uh, multiplied by the number of suppliers, it comes to a headache for the regulatory department. It's come to be an headache and a difficult situation to manage uh, for the top management when you have to talk about resources, when you have to, about, to talk about allocation of resources, when you have to talk about prioritization, when you have to talk about time to market. We are a SaaS platform, Kenshin, that has been figured, designed, and developed uh, by an industry expert uh, in, uh, in the FNF. My partner, uh, Herman Castillo, which is currently the technical director of the uh, FNF Association and has more than 15 years of experience. So because we are industry experts, um, we have designed and adapted the solution for both industry players of the cosmetic value chain in order to handle uh, the technical supplier documentation management to enable the process excellent achievement in the relative supply chain. It works with two pillars. The first one is uh, extracting all the relevant data of the technical documentation, relevant data from IFRA, relevant data from allergen certification, from TDS, from kosher, from halal, from reach, from safety data sheet, from number, uh, and it's not restricted right now. And the future will bring for sure, more documentation to manage. So that's the first pillar. The second one is how we process the information through our SaaS platform in order to enable the minimization of errors uh, thanks to automation uh, or 
uh, robotic process automation, as it called, is it called um, automation of requesting when it comes for uh, validity date, uh, automation of requested when you have to process a bulk request for regulation changes, uh, automation uh, when it comes for receiving a documentation that is not compliant, whether it has erroneous data or inconsistent data. So um, our SaaS platform provides a dashboard that uh, uh, allows process validation, allows data control, allows key performance indicator, uh, and other, all, other features that we right now uh, foresee as a necessity uh, to uh, allow regulatory affairs employees to address uh, their time with more, uh, to one more relevant matters, you know. Uh, that has a direct cost and a positive cost impact uh, when you are looking at uh, increasing see, process speeds. Uh, in fact, you are more uh, efficient in terms of time and in terms of time to market, basically. And that brings flexibility and also dimensioning capacity to our industry players. Um, we are uh, in what we call the intelligent data processing. So our customers uh, use this data to perform uh, their labeling, labeling process, to perform their uh, key performance indicator, as we said. Uh, at the end, uh, if I can use an example of the, 50 new, the 57 new allergens that are going to be implemented uh, in the very, very near future, uh, it provides you uh, real data and very quickly and will allow uh, the perfumer, at the moment we are talking, to get access to the information as soon as the supplier is capable to provide uh, this certification. Yeah. Um, actually, in Kemshen, we, 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 we took uh, as a starting point uh, the uh, issue of the market right now. Uh, when you look at the fragrance house, normal fragrance house is approximately 1,500 ingredients, maybe up to 2,000 if they're really present in the fine fragrance uh, market. Uh, but yeah, 1,500 uh, with an average of three suppliers. It comes for an allergen situation, the need for your um, uh, um, uh, quality system and, and, and the, uh, uh, the quality track, you will need to record approximately 4,500 uh, new allergen certification. So that will implicate uh, uh, resources uh, to, uh, to, to deal with this information and transform it into a, a manageable data for the, for the, for the manufacturer of a, of a fragrance compound. We had an estimation of approximately 250 emails. We have a, a rough estimation of more than 2,300 hours just to extract the data that you have received taking the point that you have received it uh, straightforward from your supplier, which is not the case most of the time. So we are about, uh, uh, yeah, 2,300 hours to dedicate just to the treatment of that uh, type of information and changes in the regulation. We're talking about an estimation of 300 errors, that uh, evaluation of uh, internal and external impact as, as to be foreseen, but uh, it's a real impact. It's a real impact in terms of hours. You can, we can compare and make the analogy with mm -hmm. the implementation of IFRA 49, that for a similar fragrance house, uh, the estimation is uh, about uh, 600 hours with five uh, full-time dedicated uh, regulatory associates to manage only data extraction uh, of the 3,000 500 documents, more or less, and we don't talk about erroneous data uh, entry, uh, neither the time involved in, uh, in the email management. So it's a, it's a rather uh, significant bucket to address. 
So indeed, that's a significant uh, optimization of resources that we can have while uh, leveraging AI in regulatory affairs. And if I'm not mistaken, Odile, you wanted to add something on this point. Yes, I wanted to add something on this point. I think in most of the creation uh, um, uh, houses today, we have the safety and regulatory that is embedded in our creation station. You create and you know if you're going to be IFRA or specific for uh, countries or, or clients or whatever. What is important today, and I think it was mentioned here, is the data. And how, as an industry, are we stronger by sharing our data, especially on the raw materials. It's very important that we all have the same base of data, especially when it comes to regulatory, when it comes to sustainability. We cannot have some suppliers who tell you one day, oh yeah, this is biodegradable, but, uh, and the second day this is not biodegradable, depending on who they are selling to. I think it's really important now if we want to be credible in front of the governments, in front of the, the ECC, etc., to see how we can really share some basic data that are still extremely important to build all the algorithm that we are doing at the moment. And how to calculate them with clear KPIs as well and be transparent with customers. Totally exactly. right. This is something that we mentioned yesterday through the Sustainability Roundtable. Totiza, that's a very good point. Thank you for sharing, Odile. And now I'm turning to actually an other part of the supply chain with Hauya. So Hauya is General Manager at CPL Aroma. And uh, recently, if I'm not mistaken, you've been deploying artificial intelligence on the boots, by the way, that we can try today still. Um, to optimize sales and evaluation, is that right? Yes, Valérie, correct. Thank you very much. So as you know, and uh, maybe some of you here know as well, my background is actually from evaluation. So the evaluation side of the fragrance industry is kind of the link between the perfumers, uh, the noses, and the markets. And they work in close partnership with uh, the sales team and the sales division. And I can tell you that for the few past, oof, 15, 20 years, the sales and evaluation process has not evolved drastically so much. And any person working in a fragrance house will tell you that whether you're working for a startup that's just starting their business and not really know what they want, mm -hmm. or whether you're working for an established brand, the amount of work, sampling, perfumer creation, and evaluation is not so different, you know? So from a management perspective, we're trying to think how can we optimize that particular part of the process while improving our win rate, which means improving our um, success factor in hitting the fragrances for the brand, reducing the amount of sampling, reducing the amount of back and forth that happen between the customer and the salesperson or account manager. So just to give you an example, a tangible example, how many of us, when you work into this region, for example, talking about the Middle East region, you speak with your customer and it's really difficult to get a clear understanding of what fragrance they actually have in mind. We're doing, it's like looking in a crystal ball. You get briefs that say, well, I want a fragrance that's unique. Another person says, okay, but I want a fragrance that's fresh. And at the end of the day, it is the difficult job of the account manager and the evaluator and the perfumer to interpret what this person has in mind. So as you rightfully said, Valérie, this year we tried to, okay, let's get a little bit of artificial intelligence help to see whether we're shooting in the dark or to nail the fragrance selections for our customers. So I'm happy to say that we partnered with Oh My Notes, that you will talk about that, I guess, a little bit later, on our stand. And the whole idea was to utilize this artificial emotional intelligence as a sales tool, as kind of the link between the brands and the fragrances. Same will say that she likes to describe her tool as the Alexa of perfumes. After experience, I think it's actually the Tinder of perfumes. <laughs> The customer comes and they are telling us, you know, uh, I want, I mean, we had some very strange requests so far, but some things can be like, I want to be the most powerful person in the show today. And our algorithm is helping that person find the fragrance from a given library that's going to make them feel the most powerful person in the show today. And just one more thing to add. 
this tool has been, we're piloting this right now. And the whole concept behind this is to target digital natives and Gen Zers. So that particular generation was born with the internet. I think as millennials, we're the last generation that you an analog world. So it speaks their language. They are used to talking to a machine, to filming videos and so on. So if you come to see us uh, on our stand, actually this section is managed by two persons who are from Gen Z. They don't have prior sales experience. They're not particularly uh, knowledgeable in the fragrance world, but the tool has been helping them respond to our customer briefs. It was an amazing presentation, Haria. So at this stage, we developed the fragrance sustainably. We optimized resources, an amazing perfume that will hit the need that we have on the market for our customers. But how to make sure that this beautiful fragrance that we just developed is actually going to meet with the right customer on the market, the right Gen Z, and then is going to love this perfume, engage with the perfume, and keep on using it, and purchasing and repurchasing, and so forth and so on. So we're going to talk about customer experience with um, Sami to start, and then we'll move on with Sarah. So Sami, can you tell us more about Oh My Note? What's your concept and how does it work in practice? Thank you, Valérie. But before speaking about Oh My Note, I, want, I would like to continue on what Raouya said. One of the most challenges that we have today in the fragrance industry is, uh, is that the generation is changing. So the Gen Z uh, will be more than 25% uh, of the luxury market by 2025. And millennials plus Generation Z say that uh, the retail experience is very important, but so far it is dull, uh, it is similar everywhere. Uh, uh, they are hyper-connected, they don't find uh, uh, anything that attracts them. So um, it is different because um, uh, the generation, for, uh, the Gen Z, uh, and even millennials, uh, they are used to uh, digital experiences. They are used to uh, gaming experiences in purchasing uh, many things in uh, fashion, in cosmetics, in uh, makeup. But when it comes to fragrance, there is no, no like that much uh, digital tools that can help the user to select and to meet with the right fragrance. I was walking in the beauty world and I was saying, wow, there is so much perfumes as a consumer. How can I know which which is the best investment I will make, which is the best fragrance for me so far. And this is why, uh, and this is the idea behind developing Oh My Not. So Oh My Not, uh, it is similar to the Alexa of the fragrance, but uh, we use video rather than uh, audio. So um, we have only three steps. Uh, the first step is shape, uh, is share, sorry. So uh, the user will share with uh, this digital and smart tool uh, uh, verbally, you will explain what do you want, uh, what do you need, how do you want to feel after wearing this perfume. Then uh, the artificial intelligence behind this will predict for you what are the best scents for you, what are the best ingredients that you might need now. As a consumer, huh? we speak from the consumer part of the story. Um, and then the consumer, when will, uh, he will get the predictions, he will contribute he will shape this uh, recipe. He can add ingredients, he can remove ingredients, he can uh, contribute, and then we have a final recommendation module that will search into 50,000 uh, perfume. We have a database of 50,000 per, uh, perfume, which is public, and then he, the algorithm will recommend for you, this is the perfume, perfume or the perfume product that, will, that is corresponding at, on what you say. So the technology behind Oh My Not is not based on uh, uh, how old you are, what is your job, uh, mm -hmm. give me your email, because I think that perfume is a matter of emotions, and so the artificial intelligence that we are using is based on emotion AI. What we want is to detect what is your emotional profile at this moment and make you and facilitate this meeting with the right product. So when you smell, you will smell uh, fully you will be happy to smell this, uh, this product. So, uh, so far, uh, as I told you, uh, we don't uh, ask anything about personal information because we don't believe that uh, this is something pertinent in, the, in terms of uh, uh, recommending the right product. And the data we get behind, 
uh, is a data that is specific to uh, the ingredient at ingredient level and uh, what are the emotions of the, the of the client. So here we are in an, an approach that is 100% customer centric. So we want to know who you are and we want to give you something that you need uh, as much as much as possible. It was a very clear explanation. Thank you. And then we all know here because we are all fragrance lovers and then we work in the industry. So we know that fragrances are slowly linked to emotions. And then you could scientifically explain it and then develop a tool that will translate these emotion into fragrances or the fragrance selection. So then the Gen Z will find out their, their favorite fragrances. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Welcome. And now we'll go even further because we have, we have today on board Sarah Evans uh, talking on behalf of Shaloub. So we are talking about a, a pretty impressive large scale luxury retail operation here in the region. So how does it work in matter of enhancing customer experience in the region? So Shalou Group is probably one of the biggest retail groups in the region and possibly one of the largest luxury partners in the world. So we have a huge amount of customer data, both online and offline. So we've built a 360 customer data platform and that kind of informs every part of the customer journey. So from customer acquisition, targeting, brand preferences, how often a customer might even buy a fragrance. We even use it in ad suppression. So if a customer has just purchased a fragrance, we're not going to show them another ad there. In store, um, our store associates have a clienteling application where they can see previous customer purchase history to make informed, personalized recommendations. And even if we don't know a customer, right, if they come online for the first time, they start browsing through a, a certain brand or a certain fragrance category, we can offer kind of wisdom of the crowd, people who bought this also bought that. So we literally use AI technology throughout the whole of the customer buying journey. Impressive. Because as a customer, you don't know that you actually leave so much data behind you that can be used to support your purchase, right? Yeah, data is very powerful. Thank you. And now we're going to talk about data, which is a hot topic, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody loves data. And it seems that the more data you have, the more successful you're going to be in the industry. But we don't really know what it means, right? So could you give us a definition of data, Sami? I'll get back to you for very tough topics. <laughs> no problem. So, so data is everywhere. Everything you see around us can, can be uh, uh, used as data. So for me, the definition and the most simple definition of data is uh, that data is a set of facts. Uh, we have um, quantitative data and qualitative data. Qualitative data is how to qualify something. I mean, uh, in the fashion, we can say uh, we have uh, dresses uh, with size small, medium, and, uh, and large. And these are categories that we use to classify to, uh, in the cate categorization of products. And we have quanti uh, quantitative data. And quantitative data is uh, basically uh, numbers. And under the quantitative data, we have discrete data and continuous data. The discrete data is uh, fixed numbers. Uh, I give you an example to make it uh, uh, easier. Uh, let's say we can uh, describe a family. Uh, this family uh, is composed by two adults, uh, three children, and two pets. So these are uh, discrete uh, numbers because we cannot say uh, this family is composed by two and a half adults, etc. And the, the continuous data is uh, another type of data, which is, uh, for example, when we say the temperature is uh, 38.5 degrees, this is discrete data. So we can collect data in many ways. Uh, now we have uh, softwares and tools to collect the data. For each time you, you use your phone, your computer, uh, sometimes uh, you, we think it's free. It's not free. You are sharing data. And also we can have specific data by uh, uh, piloting uh, statistics or uh, um, piloting uh, questionnaires, uh, etc. And we can leverage this data and classify it, as I said before, qualitative, quantitative, discrete, and continuous. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope it helped everyone here today. <laughs> and now I'm turning to you, actually to the whole panel, but we're going to start one by one. I would like to know today, at which level do you actually use data within your company? Is it for creative process? Is it to enhance the sales? At which data? So I'm going to start 
with you, Philippine, please. Yes. So with Filira Simrise, we use data throughout the creation process, mainly at the beginning, uh, to innovate. At the same time, to set a standard of sustainability in our uh, fragrances. And uh, we are about to also uh, integrate some consumer insights to uh, be able to predict the liking of our fragrances, to create uh, winners and best sellers on the market. But what I want to highlight about um, data as an augmented perfumery assistant is that we are not just mining data. We, Filira and all AI tools for perfumery, they, are, um, they have to be really intelligent. They are digesting the data and it's a con constant like updating. We are, like, and it's a, it, it's a long process. Over four years, we are now leveraged um, over five million formulas uh, and uh, 2,000 um, raw materials property, physical chemicals, and mainly uh, olfactive uh, classification. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's That's a pretty brilliant, impressive. Yeah, yeah, very much. And like every day, though, this data is, of course, updated and increased. And what's interesting with AI is that it's exponential because it doesn't work at night. It keeps on working at night while we are tired. It doesn't need to eat either, right? And then I'm turning to Odile because if I'm not mistaken, you use AI at different levels. I mean, data at different levels, right? Exactly. So we use data, use data uh, for the creators. And we are now the 3.5 million formulas that we are using uh, that are the heritage and the legacy of the 370 perfumers we've had in the company. We are using it not only for creation, consumer insight, we are also using it for evaluation, for development. And uh, next week we are, using a, we are launching a brand new platform uh, that will be dedicated to evaluator and AI will suggest reading the, the, the project, this is what you uh, could submit or should work from, etc. So the suggested by AI is also now helping all the evaluation and the project coordinator. And there is a question as well that we forgot to mention earlier that could actually come to the evaluator. So how are the evaluators feeling about it? Are they a bit skeptical about using the AI or are they in peace with the AI? I think they are very much in peace with the AI because it really helped them to refocus on what they like and they are here for, meaning the human interaction, smelling, developing with the creator, because at the end of the day, it's what will make the difference. As I was just saying before, it's a nose, a brain, and this intuition, this knowledge you have that will make the difference. The AI is really helping for everything and all the complexity that is around this uh, extremely complex framework we have when it comes to price, regulatory, uh, being a super tester, etc., where we all also... Uh, so they will become out. super evaluators like super perfumers, exactly. right? Exactly. Perfect. I know I'm turning to who, you, Haoya, because you already started the process improving sales and evaluation with the AI. So where do you use your data? So what I think is interesting, as in continuation to what I have already said, a lot of times when we are working on a particular fragrance, we have to make an informed guess in terms of what people like. The data that we are hoping to gather is actually going to help us understand whether we were correct or not in that guess. So understanding, for example, words by, that are used by our customers to describe fragrances. Uh, to give an example, to make things a little bit more tangible, summer, summer freshness. A summer scent is an extremely different concept, whether it's a European scent or whether it's a Middle Eastern or an African scent. So we are hoping to utilize the data gathered from the application as um, a confirmation that we were on the right mm. track and also to help us understand the gaps because sometimes we don't think about what consumers use or the keywords that the customers are using when they describe sense. So acquiring the language and understanding the words and the semantics that are used will help us figure out whether we have any gaps in addressing that market, basically. So we can use and improve the marketing strategy and then the wording that we use to better target our customers, right? Exactly. And then they really feel engaged with the product. Yeah, it's about building an alignment between yes. what the customer actually wants and what we are giving them. So this is what we are talking about, exactly. We developed this fragrance, this is for you, this is the language you understand. It's yeah. beautiful. 
And now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Sami, you wanted to just make a point on this as well. Sorry? How do you use your data at all my notes? Yeah. So the data that we gather at all my notes will feed <laughs> again the, the algorithm. So each time we refresh the algorithm with the new data, so it will be uh, more sophisticated to understand uh, the users uh, and to uh, make a, an almost exact profiling of the, of the users. And also we use this data to provide it to our partners so they can, uh, 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 they can understand better uh, the customer expectation and move as fast as the customer is changing and driving these uh, market changes. So this will help them to have more engagement and to keep the clients so they come back because they will feel uh, that they are, uh, they feel the ownership of, uh, of the brand, they will feel understood and uh, this will help to, uh, uh, to maintain the engagement of uh, the client, which is a big uh, problem in the fragrance industry. Totally clear, feel yeah. understood, that's very strong. <laughs> Thank you. And now to Sarah, so how do you use your data, Chalou? So at Chaloup, it's literally every single point of the, of the business life cycle, right? From brand acquisition through supply chain, customer acquisition, customer retention, loyalty, um, and even down to kind of logistics and smart route planning and other things. So I think to sum it up really succinctly, it's about getting the right product to the right customer at the right time. So that's how we delight our customers in the end. Thank you. And we also have a recorded video from Tony, right, regarding the use of data at Chem Chain. So if we don't mind, we're just going to listen to his answer. For us, uh, the data generated uh, by the AI are uh, available uh, whenever our customer wants uh, or users wants. They are available throughout the SaaS platform, but not only for one site, it could be uh, exchange with different sites of the of the of the companies using our system. Uh, when it comes to uh, audit preparation, you have live information. You are capable to provide on time because all the data uh, extracted, but the physical document receipt is always available for you. So uh, this is uh, a data that is whenever you want available. Uh, and for whatever usage you need, whether it is for labeling, whether it is for cap, uh, key performance indicator, whether it is for uh, massive uh, regulatory changes, uh, it's available for your, for the customer of my customer uh, to demonstrate the capacity to run the, the, the process validation of one ingredient or 10 ingredient or 1,000 ingredients in a straight-through process environment. And now we have three exciting questions, so please bear with us. We're going to talk about the future of artificial intelligence. So we got the chance to discuss the current application, which is already very futuristic, the current application of artificial intelligence in our industry. But the speed of change is exponential. So let us envision the future today. According to you, what could be the future of AI if I'm turning to you, Philippine? So according to, to us, to Simrise and to uh, Filera, we already thought ahead about what could be the next module we're going to um, uh, work on. And we actually thought about uh, perfume with benefits. We have a program called ActiMode where we are able to classify all the well-being benefits each raw materials can bring to our customers and our client and the perfume users. So we were thinking of including those um, elements into the, the data classification to basically create perfume with benefits uh, in a very fast way. And then we, we could also think about something a bit more crazy and for example, combining AI and OAI technology, like for example, linking uh, it to a headspace where we could mimic uh, nature uh, instantly with uh, with filera, so we could do like a yeah a head pa head space of for example a flower or or a resin that could be translated right away into a an accord, which is a beautiful point that you rose because 
back at the time, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mrs. Berenger Margarinos Rouchat, former uh, firm niche head of sustainability, would say, if you want to protect nature, you need to mimic it. Mimic it. Mimic it. So now I'm turning to you, Haoya. What is the future of uh, AI for you? So, Valérie, I remember when we were prepping this conversation, I struggled to answer this question. And I still find it a very difficult question to, to answer because, as you mentioned, the speed of change is so insane that we cannot be imagining what the future will look like. If you ask me what the future will look like, looking at everything that's happening in the UAE, so the government has been announcing a digital strategy, there has been investment happening in terms of the metaverse and the artificial intelligence across all of the sectors. So personally, I think the future of AI is going to be everywhere. They're going to be our friends. We will be having our little personalized robots with us. Uh, we would like to look at how do we send the metaverse because we will be living in 3D spaces that will allow us maybe to escape sometimes the harsh reality of life. And, you know, why not imagining fragrances of how it feels like when I'm flying on my dragon? And that's the best answer I could come up with. <laughs> This is beautiful. Very creative. Thank you. And then, uh, Sarah, if I may. Yeah, I think for me, um, what's exciting in the future is facial recognition technology in retail. So we already have the kind of checkout free experience of Amazon Go, but to dive a little bit deeper, being able to understand a customer's emotion, whether they're happy, excited, or frustrated or sad, is something really exciting that will really kind of be a game changer in the retail world. And Sami? Would you like to add something regarding the future? Please bear with us, we still have some time together. Sammy, the future of the future of AI for you in a few words. Uh, in few words, uh, uh, in few words, in, uh, in the fragrance. If I focus on the fragrance, uh, it might be. Uh, um, I think now the best data to understand the customer is CRM data. Maybe tomorrow we we'll need this because this is not a very clear uh, vision of uh, what we are in as a consumer and to focus more on the emotions. This is from one side. From another side is to uh, reduce the gap between the, the consumer and the fragrance by giving uh, uh, more immersive uh, experience to, to see the ingredients in the, using metaverse or using augmented reality and to make the user feel exactly what is the fragrance. Oh, sorry. So the future for me uh, is uh, to leave uh, the CRM uh, data because it's not uh, that pertinent to understand what are my emotions as a, as a person. I'm, I might have the same uh, CRM data, but I'm a 100% different per person. So we, we need to focus on who I am exactly and provide me with a, a personalized uh, experience. So tomorrow I will feel... Uh, Uh, loyal to this brand, and I will feel like I'm uh, uh, I'm und well understood by this uh, by these people. And why not to give more insights about the fragrance, uh, like uh, using metaverse or augmented uh, reality to to bring you where the ingredient is and to make you feel it uh, more and more. Thank you. And then we wanted as well to touch upon collaboration, saying that if we want to have. If you want to have a greatest impact in matter of sustainability in our industry, collaboration is key to strive. And then the example that you gave about data audit was a very good one. Then we also have an example that we will not get the chance to play today by Tony Belmonte, because when he designed actually um, a startup idea around AI and regulation, how to optimize the management of regulatory documents, he designed uh, the concept along with uh, Eurofragance, their partner, But this is a tool that can be used across the industry by all the perfumery houses. So this is also a great example of collaboration across our, towards our industry. So if you have another example of collaboration, um, Rao, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you wanted to highlight something. Yeah, for me, it's about also collaborating more intensely with the brands. 
because when you think of brands, they are actually like a personality, a personification. So if before we start the development process, we do have data that is gathered on an emotional level with tools that allow us to understand the brand personification, we're actually co-creating the fragrances together even before we start developing scents. So I believe collaborating with brands every step of the way is super important via AI. Makes total sense. And we're going to finish our conversation with a very funny question. Because when we talk about AI, we often think about science fiction movies where the, the artificial intelligence is going to take over humankind and then decimate us all. But what is the science fiction movie that will represent the most the use of AI in our perfumery industry? I think we wanted to start with... But maybe um, we can do the line. With you, Philippine. Yes. So if I think about a uh, science fiction movie, I, I could uh, think uh, about Pacific Rhyme, which is not like a masterpiece of cin cinematography. But it's very interesting because the, the, the robot, the machine, works like an exoskelet. Uh, it doesn't exist or doesn't function by itself. But uh, it enhances the power and the capabilities of the perfumer. So it would be like a super perfumer. Thank you. And Odile, so we have to watch. And Odile, please, you. So speaking about super perfumers, it will be the Avengers because they are all different. So we respect their personality and they all have some specific power. So that will be the science fiction for me. But not so much science fiction, quite reality today. Quite reality today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So exoskelet superpower. And then we will have uh, Hauya. So I feel a bit more on the poetic side because <laughs> I chose a book. Uh, I'm going for a book called Clara and the Sun by British author Kazuo Ishiguro, actually recommended by Bill Gates. And it talks about the robot who becomes the best friend of a little girl. Mm. Beautiful. And then Sarah? So I think for me, um, Ex Machina, where the AI Ava learns to read Caleb's innermost desires and create empathy with him. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't end too well for Kayla because uh, well. she uses uh, this knowledge to set herself free. So let's hope it doesn't end like that. Thank you. And Same, what is your favorite science fiction movie? I don't watch movies so, so much, but uh, I definitely uh, see my, uh, the, uh, the film uh, Don't Look Up. I don't know if you know it because I recognize myself in the main actress uh, and also because... Um, it highlights something very important that we need to trust artificial intelligence, but the final word, the final decision uh, needs to be a human decision, and uh, nothing will replace uh, the wise decision of a human being. Thank you very much Welcome. for this conclusion. Thank you all for the participation to the panel. That was lovely. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you, Valerie, Valerie. Thank for you. great moderation. Thank you. Thank you. So enjoy the beauty world. <laughs> <laughs>